Good morning. We had quite a good sleep here at the Spring River Rest Area, just opposite um, the Bungle Bungles Entry um, Road. So uh, we got recommended to do the Bungle Bungles really early, like sunrise, but we were just really tired last night. And we thought whatever time we wake up, we'll just see and go from there. There is a little bit more light um, than I was hoping for. I was hoping to do it a little bit earlier just for photography purposes, but it is what it is. We're just going to work with what we've got. Should have gotten up earlier. Um, well, regardless of whether I have a, had a gotten up earlier or not, it still wouldn't have worked because apparently it can be, I think this is for caravans, but it can be a two hour drive to do like 60 kilometers into the Bungle Bungles because the roads are really bad. People say they're worse than the Gib River, so Gib River Road. So um, we'll just see about that. Uh, a lot of people airing down their tires this morning, so we'll see how we go. Um, but yeah, plan is to go in there and explore the park a little bit, um, try and take some photos if um the photos i'm taking aren't great we'll just have to hang around there all day until the sun starts to set and kev's moving so this is moving yeah, my camera caravans are starting to leave so but, I, I've been stuck behind them on that road anyway it is what it is so let's see how we go cool little creek crossing here this is called fletcher's creek just on the way to um the visitor center at the uh, Bungle Bungles National Park. I forget the name. I still have to learn how to pronounce that. This one's actually one of the deeper ones that we've gone through. That bog it was a massive bog hole on the way in. It didn't look that deep and then all of a sudden it was just... I reckon that's probably about uh, maybe 60 centimetres. Oh, Do you reckon? Oh, it's stalled. <laughs> Did you? Oh. Didn't um, even fucking feel it. Do you reckon about 60 centimetres deep? Fucking hole. There's a lot of rocks. Yeah. There you go. See, that's why you leave the river crossings to make it. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> All right, we've got just under 10 kilometers to go until the visitor center. There has been so many little water crossings along the way. I've lost count. Um, but the view is really pretty. At the moment, we're not seeing any of the um, bungle bungles. You might have to go further in for that. Um, but we will see, we're heading towards the visitor center. So we'll try and grab a map from there and ask them what the best parts are, what the best hikes or um, gorges or spots to see the bungle bungles are uh, on ground because I will not get up on a helicopter. And we will go from there. All right, we've rocked up at the visitor center. We're gonna go in and grab a map and see what there is to do around here. All right, we just went in and got ourselves a detailed map. Um, the gentleman there was really helpful. So we don't have time to do all of it today because it's a 40 minute, oh, so we're here at the moment, it's a 40 minute drive to go down to these parts and the walk in here is about a 10 to 15 kilometer return. So he said it takes like five to six hours to walk in there. So we're not able to do that all today, otherwise we wouldn't be able to do the top. And he said one of the best things to do is this echidna um, chasm. So it's this really cool like um, small gap in the rocks and he said if you hike in at 11.30, it takes about half an hour um, and if you hike in at 12 o'clock the sun sort of comes through from 12 to 1 that hour the sun peaks through and it looks really cool for photos so we're going to go and do that um, so I've sort of labeled them just with a number in order of what we'll sort of do them um, and then yeah it's a 90 minute trip all the way up there and then we've also got to factor in um, the half an hour walk into there as well so uh, we'll go and get started okay, so as we're traveling you can see the bungle bungles in the distance there I don't know how well this picks it up so obviously we'll get some closer footage but it's pretty cool they call them beehive domes here there's a better view of some of them out there hopefully you can see that some more here they're literally just everywhere i apologize the car windscreen is filthy and if i open the window so that it's clearer you won't be able to hear anything because the snorkel will just be super loud so we will hop out and show you when we get to our first walk all right Pick an any gorge trek. Let's go. No drones, so. It's quite a flat walk so far. Beautiful views. A couple of flies here and there. Sun's got some flies, Yeah, bloody ass it does. I'll tell you what, the solar's been getting absolutely smashed by like <laughs> nine o'clock in the morning. Everything's already fully charged, which is good. It's just goes to show how strong that sun is up there and there's never a cloud in the sky up here I don't know why it's so weird it's a cool little I don't, I don't know if that's like a beehive or something but definitely looks like one mud wasps or some shit 
No messing around here. As soon as you take that corner, he's bang straight in the valley here. There's heaps of them. They look so cool. Some of these walls are so cool. He's so tall. It's a nice sandy walk. The sand's cold in the shade. I think it's a loop walk, pretty sure. Hard to say out there because of the sun, but. We just stumbled across this little cave bit. I'm pretty sure there's water in there. From what I can see. Let's see how those rocks. Oh yeah, I don't know. This is why. Uh, I don't know. It's meant to be a little waterfall. Uh, next one is Cathedral Gorge. It's so nice and cool here. Sorry, I'm not really taking much footage because I'm holding heaps of shit. We need to invest in a backpack. We've got a camel back, but it doesn't really fit much in it. The temperature down here dropped like 15 degrees before. That's cool. This goes forever, it said 500 metres. So cool. <laughs> Little ladder we gotta climb up. Quite a very high gorge. Seems to be very popular. Lots of greenery. This must fill up with water a fair bit during the wet season. Well, not during the wet season, when it actually rains. Look at the colours of that green tree and the red rocks behind it. It's beautiful. People singing in the cathedral. Yeah. Amen, brother. Someone's cut that with a demo saw. So look how straight it is. This is the end of the gorge. Man, the colours here are freaking awesome. Besides Shrek Swamp, she's a bit dirty. Look where all the water runs down that wall. There's water here behind us. And that's the exit where we came in. The water looks ten times worse from out here. Right, I'm making our way back out now. Um, and then we just got to finish off the last 400 metres of the dome walk, so then we'll be back to the car park, and that's it for this side of the campground or we'll national park. The north side. All right, a bit sweaty, but we have finished um, the south side of the national park, so we're going to head up to the north side now. They reckon it takes about an hour and a half, but I don't think it'll take us that long because they did recommend. Um, so where we were the visitor centre, we're the south side and they said 40 minutes there and then if you're from the visitor centre to the left, it's 50 minutes. Um, so yeah, about an hour and a half all together. And we're right down at the south side and we're going to travel past the visitor centre up. So we'll see how long it takes us. It's 10.30 now um, and they said that we need to be in the um, Echidna thing at 11.30 which gives us an hour, including half an hour walking time to get up there. So we'll just see how we go. Alright, we've just pulled up to the car park and the time is quarter past 11. So it took us 45 minutes to get from one side to the other. Um, car park is very full obviously because this is the time to come and see the, um, what do they call it? A chasm? Echidna chasm. Echidna yeah. chasm. So I'm excited. Welcome to Echidna. You are here. Well, we are here. You're not here. We are.
Quite the rocky walk at the moment. Man, that sun is so hot already. All the rocks that have like um, joined into this one massive. Where else? That's so cool. This. That's cool, that. Quite a nice walk. It's very rocky. There's lots of these palm trees or yakas, whatever the hell they are. I think it gets a lot tighter and darker. All of a sudden we've got like a cool breeze coming through here. I don't know how, but... Ooh, getting claustrophobic. Also that sound was terrible. It's so cool how all those pebbles are just stuck in that sand cement mixture. There is, there has to be billions of rocks that make up this whole thing. You're not scared of the dark, are you, Holly? Yeah. That's good. It's starting to get pretty dark. Oh, that's where we just walked in. That is a long way. Starting to brighten up again now. What feels that glow? Now it's getting dark again. It's gorgeous, it's cool. It's like chasm, whatever they call it. Apparently, we've got to climb these. Probably staying down there because she's done her ankle. Well, she, she's hurt it, so. I guess I'll have to go on. That's so cool. I love the walls, it's like an old mud house. Wow. Still going. A nice little cave, is he? Oh wow, that's sick. Nice I've made some stairs. Wow. That's cool. Try and film as much as I can oh, without dropping Holly's phone. Getting real dark down here. Oh, I should have brought me night light. Oh, here we go. Here's a famous end. 
do not enter. Wasn't really playing on it. Wow. It's hard for this to pick up, it doesn't like the sun. I know, so that was the kidney chasm. Still going. Just finished it, but we're on our way back, so I don't know if I'll film much. You're probably sick of seeing the same bright light. That's it for us at the Pernalulu National Park. Pernalulu. Um, we did have a few more things circled, but uh, I just said to Kev, it's 30, I think it's 32 today actually. Uh, it's quite hot out in the sun and. Everything um, looks the same. Yeah, everything's starting to sort of look the same. You know, when you like explore somewhere and you're like, yep, it's awesome, it's amazing, you still, you still love what you're seeing and take photos of it, but it all looks very similar. So. I think we're done for the day. It's lunchtime. Um, I think we're going to go back to the visitor centre. We have Wi-Fi there, so might be able to use the Wi-Fi a little bit and have some lunch, and then oh. yeah, find a camp spot. Whether we stay at the same place or somewhere different, we'll see. Okay, we've decided not to stay at the same place that we did last night because we just drove back there to have some lunch, and it was absolutely packed. There was like no room, even down further on near the river, which people often miss. Apparently, according to Wiki Camps, that was packed as well, just full of caravans. So. Um, we decided to go through. We're not sure if we're going to go all the way to Kununurra. It was about a three hour drive and it was about two o'clock when we left so we wouldn't be there till about five. Um, we'll just see how we go for time. There's a couple of rest stops along the way um, and yeah. We just saw the saddest thing. Oh yeah. It was some mangy looking dog or dingo. Like it was grey skinned. You could see its skin. It had no hair on it and you could just see like very random patches of Hair, like on its back and it was so skinny it just looked sad as just needed to put it down it was gross it was walking so slow as well like almost like near the road just yeah right near the road just like it was half asleep the poor thing like yeah not good hello i don't know how much of me this is going to pick up because the sun's sort of behind the rooftop tent if i go back you can see me but then i can't see you um, I don't know if Kev said where we stayed last night, but we ended up staying in a rest stop that's just about half an hour out of Karatha. Um, so the plan today is we've gotten up, we've gotten almost ready. Kev's just in the toilet. It's um, 10 to 9. We need to get groceries because we are very low. This is probably like the lowest we've been. We've been like this morning, just to give you a bit of um, eyesight into what we've been like with our food. We cut our last wrap in half and Kev had a bacon wrap and I had an egg wrap. We had two eggs left and three rashes of bacon this morning. So we're using our food to its full, um, full capacity, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, we do need to get some groceries. Um, we also need to fill up potable water. I want to go to the visitor center if there's one there or like if there's a tourist shop and see if they have stickers. So I've been trying to collect stickers for the fridge and I really love like these ones here. Um, and I've been trying to find them. I'm gonna sit back up there. I've been trying to find them in shops around, but they're actually pretty hard to find. So um, there was a few at the um, Pernalulu Visitor Center yesterday when we did the Bungle Bungles that said like Gib River Road and Kimberley's, but they were really long um, rectangular ones and I just didn't like them. So I wanna try and find some in Karatha today. So that's another mission. And we also need to do washing. We have a lot of washing to do. We haven't done that in like, almost two weeks so we do need to do that um and other thing is we're gonna try our best well i should say me because kev's actually really good it's mostly um me but to spend less i feel like we haven't been bad with our spending like we haven't like gone out well we had like i don't know when we we're in broom the other day that was a bit different we had like went out for dinner twice we don't we've never done that before like that was just a once-off thing so or apart from the camel rides apart from things that we really think would be worthwhile we don't splurge um but i've sort of done our halfway budget because we're put where i think we're about halfway if not close to um and yeah it was over seventeen thousand. so if that's correct we'll be like 35 grand for a seven to eight month trip which i am not keen about um our average weekly spend at the moment is $1,500, which is double, more than double what I thought it was going to be. Um, fuel obviously has just been a massive killer. Like we spent nearly $800 this week on fuel just on the Gib River, more than the Nullarbor. 
Um, so yeah, fuel obviously is the biggest killer, but also I'm a bit guilty of being quite fussy with the food um, and not wanting something because it smells funny or like because it tastes a bit funny or whatever. So yeah, I think I just need to get better at that. And when I go to the shops, not go in there hungry because I try, like I buy a bag of lollies or something and we don't need that stuff. So I'm gonna try and be a bit more careful with money and try and bring our budget down if we can. Obviously for fuel you can't help. Um, but yeah, in saying that, we're not gonna miss out on anything that we really wanna do, but we're just gonna be very careful and, and think twice about it. So yeah, that's the plan today. Um, once Kev gets out, we'll pop this rooftop down and we'll get going. Hello, we have arrived at Kananara. We're just arrived at the uh, little laundromat here. We're gonna put some washing on, then go across the road to the Coles there and do some shopping. Okay, bit hot out there, it's 33 degrees today. Yeah. Really rough winter we're having. Um, but anyway, we got our grocery shopping done. I'm still not happy with the final amount. I don't know why it happens to still be $170 when we were literally trying to be careful, but it's just inflation, everything's going up. Did you know, a slab of Coke now is $55. Oh, here? Here, yeah, yeah. $55, we couldn't believe it. Um, anyway, we got that done, we, what else did we do? Laundry. Uh, laundry's done, yep. And then we also just stopped to the local fishing shop. Wasn't a necessity, but like I said, we are trying to save money where we can, but things that we can't justify, we just spend. We have lost a lot of lures, and obviously you can't just run in and retrieve them. Um, a massive dream of ours is to catch a barra, and you can't do that without fishing supplies. So we picked up three spinners. They were just like five bucks each. Don't know how they'll go, never heard of the brand. We'll just try it, they're just rooster tail ones. Um, and then we got a bomber. That was 25 bucks, so that's probably one of the most expensive lures I've bought. I'm a bit of a tight ass when it comes to lures. Um, and this one apparently does good. It's called the Barra Green. It doesn't dive too deep, so um, should hopefully not get snagged. It's a floating lure, uh, and that was 10 bucks as well. So uh, we're currently heading to the Ivanhoe Crossing. Um, can't cross it at the moment because it's just flowing too hard, so we'll make sure we capture that on video, but apparently you can still fish there, so uh, we'll go and check it out. All right, just rocked up at Ivanhoe Crossing. There's about four other cars here, and... Oh my God, it is flowing. You can literally hear the river. It's a little bit windy, so I probably won't fly my drone. I was going to, but I don't really want to lose it into the river and have to go fetch that out. So I'll go and show you guys the river. All right, here she is. Have a look at that. That has some pretty heavy flow to it. They've blocked it off with rocks, which is a bit like, not silly. Like I can understand why they've done it, but it's a bit sad that they have to do that because someone would be silly enough to cross it. Um, this river is full of saltwater crops. So it's completely, these little things just there are the markers and if the water goes past a certain point you obviously can't cross and that is just absolutely flowing. No thanks. Right, we've gone a bit further up the river. The flow is just insane and so is the heat. And I just said to Kev, I feel so sorry for people that live up here because all you want to do is jump in but obviously you can't. Um, haven't seen any crocs yet. There is two men fishing behind me. I just went up and had a chat to them and um, old mate's just using a hand line and reckons he caught a massive fish and actually showed me a photo. It was about a, oh, probably a good 80 centimeter barra. So there's clearly fish in there, but don't know whether we'll give it a go here because yeah, it is flowing quite hard and we just got the lures. I don't really want to lose them. All right, that's it for Ivanhoe Crossing. I'm pretty shattered that we can't cross this because it was on my bucket list. I don't know why because it's just a water crossing but it's pretty gnarly water crossing and something you don't get to every day so shattered but obviously rather be safe than sorry. Uh, Holly's led us to this fishing spot where she found someone that caught a massive barra not long ago so I think it's called the Dun Dundon or Dunham River. Just gonna go and give it a quick try. Sorry guys, we left you in the car and didn't actually update you. Uh, we ended up finding a caravan park out here. Um, it was only $35 a night. Um, and it's right, it backs onto the back of like, it's kept there, some ranges, um, which you can walk in. So we might go for a walk in those in a minute. Um, but we've just had an awesome swim in the pool and Kev's been learning to swim with the noodle that I got him. So he's been doing really well. Um, we've just been having heaps of fun in the pool. Obviously heaps better mood than this morning. You can tell that we've just like lifted up because it's bloody hot and that swim was awesome. So we've just, yeah, had a couple of hours in the pool swimming, um, come back, had something to eat, a late lunch. And then yeah, just sort of sitting here, chilling out a little bit um, before we cook some dinner or go for a walk out into the national park. So update for you. Um, we're still in Kananara. Um, and yeah, we'll still be here tomorrow as well. We're staying at like Lake Argyle, pardon me, tomorrow. Pardon me. So, um, yeah, Lake Argyle tomorrow. 
I just make no sense. I feel like I make no sense. Hopefully I'm making sense to you. Um, Lake Argyle tomorrow. We actually have a doctor's appointment tomorrow as well. I've booked one for us to get our skin checked. We've never had our skin checked in our life. And I just thought, um, because we've had so much sun exposure, me being a redhead and freckles, um, probably wouldn't hurt to get a skin check. And I have major anxiety over everything currently because I'm not at home. So <laughs> um, we're getting a skin check tomorrow. So that's booked in. And then, yeah, Lake Argyle, which we're excited about. And then crossing the border to Northern Territory. So super exciting things coming. Going for a little walk in the national park that the caravan park backs onto. And how cool is that? Sun is setting, so we did. Yeah, it is really cool. They're back on. Um, we were recommended to do it about now because the sun is setting. Also, and these zero sugar lemon mango solos absolutely slap. They're freaking awesome. Do they pop off? Do they? Yeah. Pop off. Okay, we are fresh faced. We've just had a shower. Don't think we're going to have a complete dinner tonight because we had a late lunch after going for a swim, so we're not really that hungry. Um, Kev's a little bit peckish, so were you going to have a hot chocolate? I don't know. I'll have a look what's in the cupboard. He's going to have a look. He's a bit of a sweet tooth, so um, might have a hot chocolate, but I'm done. I'm ready for bed. And what's the time? Actually, I, had a, I feel like I say this all the time. Six. I didn't have a great sleep last night. It was, it's six o'clock now. Six o'clock now, there you go. Um, I didn't go to sleep last night till 2 a.m. because I kept thinking that I could hear someone like walking around the car. Like it was a really packed rest stop, so there was so many people around. But um, yeah, I just couldn't sleep and then I was wide awake. So I fell asleep at 2, woke up at 6, didn't have a great sleep. So fingers crossed to have a better sleep today. All right, guys, that brings us to the end of another episode. Obviously, if you like our content, please give us a like, share, and subscribe. Hoorah! Hoorah!